Hello everyone, it's Dmitry Anoshin and Surfalytics and today I'm answering one of the questions from subscribers. The question was about how to manage workloads on Spark, on Databricks, EMR with Spark await workloads, what the key considerations and how to choose the right cluster size. So I can say this is quite a complicated topic and I will try to give you some ideas where and what you need to look. Moreover, this question is probably one of the most popular during the interview, especially if the team or organization is using Spark workloads, they're going to ask you about the performance and it doesn't really matter what you use, Databricks, Elastic MapReduce, HG Insight, Azure Synapse, Spark Pools, the questions uh, and the methods more or less the same. Those methods also the same for most of distributed systems, for example, even applicable for Redshift, Snowflake, because it's still a distributed system. There could be different uh, ways of consuming the metrics, but the idea more or less the same. Today, what we're going to do, we will discuss some of the key ideas, where and what you need to look, and then I give you some practical steps and maybe some examples from my personal experience. First of all, we need to start from workload characteristics. What's important, obviously, for big data tools, data volume is important and the complexity of transformations. Because the complexity of transformation could be, do we have the joins? What kind of data we have? Do we have like nested structure in JSON? Does it uh, compressed or not compressed? How much like string text information has versus just the numeric information? The data volume, right, it could be gigabytes, it could be terabytes. If you have 10 terabytes of data, you don't want to just read all all 10 terabytes at once. You want to process the data in chunks. Maybe the data is partitioned. If not, you need to find the way how to partition. Also, the size of the files in data lake, the size that you actually want to process, also matter. If you have too many small files, thousands of files with one megabyte is not, not ideal. If you have small number of files, like 10 gigabyte each or 20 gigabyte each, it's also not ideal. So ideally, you should have the good size of the files. But the job duration and concurrency, right? By concurrency, I mean uh, you might have, for example, Elastic MapReduce and you have your Spark cluster. Basically, have just single Spark cluster and number of compute instances and basically compute is limited. It's a big question how many jobs it's running in parallel because all the jobs, all consumers, they fight for resource and they're using it all together. Obviously, running one job versus running 10 jobs is very big difference on the performance. The next topic is resource requirements. Then we talk about the cluster, because cluster is, or instance is just the virtual machine, distributed system with a bunch of nodes, and usually we use the same nodes for workers, and ideally the same node for the master node. Their characteristics, what's important, is the operation memory and number of CPU cores. Then another topic is important is about shuffle and input-output operations, because one of the most expensive operations is the shuffle operation. Imagine you have multiple nodes, those Spark clusters, before they actually put the data in memory and start process this in memory, they need to read this data from file in our cloud storage. And basically this input and result they should write back. And this is input-output operation, how many input-output operation they can read. In case the data is not properly sized, where this could be happening the shuffle operation. So the nodes start exchanging the data, each virt virtual machine connecting with the network, speed of the network, it could be 1 gigabit, it could be 100 megabit per second, depends on the cloud offering. This could be the bottleneck, how fast the data is traveling. And it's usually the most expensive operation related to shuffling and input-output operations. In terms of cluster size strategy, it really depends on partitions. Can we partition the data? Because as I mentioned in the beginning, if we have one file, 10 gigabytes, and we want to read the, the whole file with no partitions, it's really hard to get the, the size of the cluster that can process this big file efficiently. It's better to break this file into chunks, and usually we use partitions, especially related to the time series. It could be partitioned by day, by hour, by month, whatever, and then we can fit one partition at a time. Number of executors and execution memory, right? That's the question, how many nodes we have and how many executors we have. We can estimate and we can control this. As well, we can the estimate the size of the cluster. 
how much memory we can assign to the cluster, how many CPUs we can assign to the cluster. The like core allocation. And usually we want, according to Spark best practice, we want to have like four or five cores per executor. The next con consideration, obviously in the services like Databricks, we can use cluster autoscaling. And it means we start from two nodes, the dedicated size, and then depends on our workload, we can just scale out or scale up. We can increase the size of the cluster, or better, we can add just from two nodes, we can jump to four, eight, 16 nodes, and depend. Of course, the cost will rise as well. Ideal way is doing some kind of benchmark and tuning, because we can test, usually we want to start from this. Assuming this is one partition, one date of our data, we know the average size, we know number of files, and we're trying to choose the best cluster to know what's the size of the cluster, how many nodes, what's the ideal for our workloads in terms of uh, cost perspective and in terms of performance. For benchmark, what's important? The job completion time, how long it takes, uh, then executor utilization, because the executors who process the data, they can be underutilized or could be overutilized. So we want to find the ideal behavior, then we see that almost like all executors work in parallel and we don't want to have any executors that are not underutilized. Uh, the shuffle operation, as I said, one of the biggest problems and challenges we, we might have is the shuffling, then the data start traveling bef between the nodes. Of course, for all what we're doing, and this is where we start our performance tuning, from monitoring, and we can use Ganglia or Spark UI, we can also get the Spark query plan and see what stages, what task we have, and what's, what's the most expensive operation we have, and how to solve it. The cost consideration is important, because in the cloud computing, it's very easy to spend like thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousands of dollars on simple compute, especially if it's not optimized. Of course, depends on the cluster type and size. It could be cost more or less. That's why you always need to think about the cost. Resource optimization, right? It's coming to here. What can you do to see if your, your resource provision is good enough strategy or it's maybe underutilized or overused? How you can find the way to decrease the cost? And maybe you, instead of having 10 different clusters, one for each department, you can try to have one cluster that serves like all the business users in another decade cluster for ETL and data engineering team. You can play with this. The idea here that the cost topic is by itself is very good. It's very simple to understand, very simple to execute because you have all the data about the cluster, their utilization. Then you can analyze the data in BI tool and spreadsheet and find the way, drive insights, uh, discover some insights to optimize the cost. And this is a great story for your interview. You can tell how you analyze the cost, how you drop the cost, maybe 10, 20 percent, and how you optimize some Spark workloads that lead to dropping the cost. Operational considerations, fault tolerance, and fault tolerance, it means, and usually in the service like Databricks, if something failing, uh, it should be like if one executor is failed, there is another one pop up and continue to work. Good idea to know what fault tolerance means and how the Spark uh, ensure that it's there. The data locality, this is related about the data transferring. And ideally, we want to have that our data lake all our storage, data lake, and data bricks lived in the single region. In the past, I had example with Trino. Then our data lake was in East US, but some of our source data, the majority of product logs, lived in US West. And we pay a lot inside GCP for transfer from one region to another region. This is also very important to understand that your ideal data solution, that's obvious, but sometimes it's not true, especially then there is some evolution in the team some old team members leaving, the new team members coming, they don't know something about this, or maybe there is DevOps team provision some resources for you, they can provision a different region, and then you just get extra cost. That's why monitoring cost is really important. Five practical steps that should help you. Step number one, you usually want to start from small. You want to monitor the metrics, Job metrics, execution time, resource utilization, shuffle, read and write. Most of the things you can find in Ganglia or you can find these in uh, Spark UI metrics. Scale up and out. You need to understand what's the difference. Scale up, assuming you have the cluster with like 8 gigabyte RAM, 8 cores. Scale up means you will just double size uh, of the node to 16 gigabyte RAM and 16 cores. Or scale out, assuming you still 
remain the same size, but you get more nodes. Obviously, in the distribution systems, you want to scale out, you want to add more nodes the same size, and trying to achieve the parallelism. You want to, for example, if you have partitions, if you have uh, the files in good size, for example, in one partition you have, I don't know, dozen of one gigabyte files, you have enough nodes that reading 12 files in parallel versus just one file at a time. Monitor cost versus performance. I hope you understood why cost is so important, and especially for modern data engineering team, the cost is very important. Do not hesitate to add this story into your resume. Write down how you cut the cost because all the data is there, all what you need to do just to look. After some time, you actually can even start thinking of budgeting your AWS solution. And executive team, leadership team will be very thankful for you if you can hold the cost under control, even if you just understand why it costs this amount of money, why it was $10,000 last week and this week is $20,000. Maybe the team did backfill, so you don't want to get any unexpected questions. Enable auto-scaling, obviously good practice, because it can help for you to, in case of uh, you accident get more data, your workload will auto-scaling, the process the data, and then shrink down. I hope you answer your questions, and despite the fact we talk mostly about Databricks and Spark, but this is applicable for most of uh, distributed systems, for example, for Trino, more or less, for Snowflake, for Redshift, because this is all distributed systems cost consideration, the tuning, the optimizations, it's all applicable and each system can show you the query plan. Most of these systems like Trino, it really depends on the file size, the compressions and parallelism and concurrency and so on. So if you have more questions, leave them under in comments. Thank you.